Hey guys, Sean from Miles to Memories. Welcome to the channel. Today we have some sad news with the announcement that three Las Vegas casinos that have been closed since March of 2020, all owned by the same company, will be permanently closed, demolished, and the land sold off. Yes, the Fiesta Henderson, Fiesta Rancho, and Texas Station are all permanently closed. What is going on? So on July 15, 2022, Station Casinos released the following statement. These properties have been an important part of our business over many years, so it is not without sadness that we announce these permanent closures. We would like to recognize and thank our former team members who worked at these properties for making them a place where our guests always felt welcome. So why exactly is Station Casinos permanently closing these three properties? We've talked so much about how there's record gaming revenue, even in the local markets. But the truth is that 90% of the customers have moved on to other properties. Station Casinos president Scott Krieger said even before the pandemic, these were their worst performing properties. He went on to say, post pandemic, at least where we are today, we don't see that it's a viable option to reopen those properties for a couple of reasons. The majority of our local customers migrated to other facilities and they say that they captured 90% of the overall play. So these properties would basically become redundant if they reopened them, not worth operating at all. We don't know what exactly is gonna happen to these three properties. The one good news of all of this is that the Ice Arena at Fiesta Rancho, which has been open for a while now, will remain open as long as Station Casinos owns the land. So no guarantee long term once they sell it, what's gonna happen to that Ice Arena, but for now, everything is going to shut down. I know a lot of you are not from Las Vegas and may not have visited a lot of these properties, especially the local properties. And I feel like each one of these three casinos has a unique history. So let's go talk about what they are, where they are, and what's next. Fiesta Henderson was announced by Gem Gaming in April of 1995 and construction began that November. Now there was a lot of weird stuff going on between Gem Gaming and Ameristar who eventually opened the property with their executives getting denied gaming licenses and all sorts of crazy stuff. But it opened as the reserve on February 10th, 1998 on a site of 35 acres on West Lake Mead Parkway just off the US 95 and Interstate 215 interchange in Henderson. In fact, the Interstate 215 wasn't even finished at that point point when the reserve opened. One unique thing about this property is it had an African theme with 80 foot tall elephant tusks outside the entrance. The parking lot was supposed to look like the Serengeti Plain. There was theming all over the place. They even had speakers inside that played raindrops and animal sounds. They had actors that went around and told the backstory of the resort. Yes, there was a backstory. There was a guy named Congo Jack who crash landed his plane into the casino and he got stuck there and there was all kinds of fun happening at the reserve in 1998. But in 2001, Station Casinos took over and they had just recently agreed to purchase the Fiesta Rancho, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And they decided they were gonna group these things together together and make the Fiesta a brand of two casinos here in Las Vegas. Unfortunately, that meant the end of reserve, but they spent a decent amount of money, renovated the property, and it officially reopened December 29th, 2001 as the Fiesta Henderson. Now in 2005, $70 million was spent to expand Fiesta Henderson. Most importantly, they added this massive parking garage, a 12 screen movie theater, and a lot more casino space. The one interesting thing about this movie theater was it was Regal Cinema's first ever all digital movie theater. And now it is a relic of the past, rest in peace. One other interesting note about Fiesta Henderson is their employees voted to go union in September of 2019. Of course, that won't happen now. So let's fly across the valley to North Las Vegas to Fiesta Rancho. Fiesta Rancho and Texas Station, the other two casinos that are being demolished, sit right across the street from each other and they both have very interesting history with very powerful players in the Las Vegas game. Starting off with Fiesta Rancho, which was just known as Fiesta until Station Casinos bought it in 2001 and sort of combined the brands with the old reserve over in Henderson and it was built by the Maloof family.
They purchased the property in North Las Vegas off Rancho Drive in 1989 and announced the $15 million Fiesta to be built in 1990. Unfortunately, they had a lot of issues getting funding for this. There were no other casinos in the area. People were skeptical that it could work, but eventually they got financing and it took all the way till April of 1994 for them to begin construction and then Fiesta opens December 14th, 1994. I remember visiting Fiesta right after it opened. It was an exciting new property. Up until that point, the only casino sort of in the northwest part of Las Vegas was Santa Fe, which was nice, but this definitely brought a new level of excitement to the area. And it was very, very good when it opened as the first hotel slash casino in North Las Vegas. One interesting thing, and wow, did I enjoy this, was it featured the first Garduño's restaurant to open outside of New Mexico, and wow, their food is so good. Now, in 1995, the Maloofs announced a $10 million expansion, which added more casino space and that famous sports on the run drive through sports book that you've probably seen. That was completed in 1996, and that added 50,000 square feet to the entire building, including the expanded festival buffet, which had 600 seats. I remember this buffet being really popular at the time. The Rio and the Carnival World Buffet had sort of created this new concept. We had different stations that were themed and Fiesta took that into a local atmosphere. One of the coolest things, and this is such a simple thing, is that they would take your drink order when you paid at the cashier before you went in and then the waitress would just bring your drinks. You didn't have to wait for somebody to come to the table. I don't know why that hasn't caught on anywhere, but uh, clearly uh, it, it's a thing of the past. Now in 1999, they did another expansion to the property and this is actually one one of the coolest things ever. They added a food court, which every casino has one now, right? They added an expanded Garduños, which it was so popular, there was always long waits. So they moved it to this expansion and also added what they called the largest tequila bar. I haven't been able to verify that claim, but the coolest thing they added then was Roxy's Pipe Organ Pizzeria. Now, I don't have great memories of this place, but I do remember visiting it and they served pizza, you know, during the day, but they also had concerts there on select nights and they had a 70 year old pipe organ that they brought in from New York. It was such a cool space and one I'm glad I got to experience back in the day. One other note of history before it was sold to Station Casinos, Fiesta was the first casino to test coinless gaming, those ticket in, ticket out systems. In July of 2000, the Maloofs had changed their vision. They wanted to build a strip-like property down on some land that they owned on Flamingo Road. So they sold Fiesta to Station Casinos for $185 million, and they used that money to build Palms Casino and Resort, another casino that was closed through most of the pandemic, although thankfully it has now reopened. Not much changed between the Station Casino's ownership and these days at Fiesta Rancho. It had already been pretty mature, but a few years into their ownership in 2004, they decided they wanted to tear down the ice rink that was at their sister property, Santa Fe Station, and they decided to construct a new ice arena at Fiesta Rancho. And that ice arena is still open to this day, despite the casino closures. In June of 2019, workers voted 85% in favor of unionizing. That won't happen, of course. Now let's fly across the street to Texas Station, another property with very interesting history. It's located on 47 acres. The first thing to note is that Texas theme. It was conceived by Frank Fertitta Jr., who is the person who founded Station Casinos, although he constructed the property on his own and then sold the casino to Station Casinos before it opened. One other note about the design of Texas Station is it was designed by Marnell Corral Associates, who also did Bellagio, Rio, Wynn Las Vegas, and a lot of other high profile projects. Projects. Perhaps this casino is one that's been expanded many more times than any others and it became a massive, massive property. But to start, Texas Station opened on July 12, 1995 with 1,600 slot machines, 35 table games, and six restaurants. Now over the years, they added a lot of stuff with two major expansions in 1998 and 2000, including a movie theater that was 12 screens, eventually expanded to 18 screens, a bowling alley that cost $15 million, tons of event space, wedding chapels, and over 121,000 square feet of gaming space when it closed. One interesting thing I remember so much about the expansion in 1998 was it brought this Martini Ranch cocktail lounge, which seemed so strange for that property. It seemed like something right out of the 2000s. 
a little bit ahead of their time. They used to have great discounts on martinis there. I spent a great deal of my childhood and young adult life at both of these properties, Fiesta Rancho and Texas Station. Loved the atmosphere there. Garduño's was one of my favorite restaurants. We had a lot of fun going to Texas Station, drinking martinis, going to watching the movies there. For a while, that was our preferred movie theater. But now, it's all a thing of the past. One thing I will say about these two properties is that they really fell into disrepair. As Station Casino said, they were the less profitable properties and therefore they just had become less nice over time with less and less investment. And the last time I had gone to both of those properties, probably a year or two before they closed, they simply just didn't measure up to what you saw before. Now I spent the last few years living much closer to Fiesta Henderson and that property has always been fairly nice but it suffers a similar fate to the other ones in that it was less profitable and there are two major station casinos very close by. First is Sunset Station which is just a mile or two down the road and Station Casinos is dumping tons of money and reinvesting in a renovation there and also just down the 215 freeway is their upscale Green Valley Ranch Resort. On the other side of town, Santa Fe Station is a little far from Fiesta Rancho and Texas Station, so not quite sure if the union vote played into that factor. We know that they're developing two new casinos in Las Vegas right now. First is the Wildfire Casino, which sits on the former site of Castaways or the Showboat, and that's gonna be a smaller local style casino over on the end of Fremont Street. And then they have Durango, which is opening in the southwest part of the valley off Durango in the 215. That's gonna cost $750 million to build. They also own land in several other spots around the valley. So perhaps we'll lose these three casinos, but we're gonna gain some other ones, a shift in the market. It doesn't hurt any less that we're losing these three historic casinos, Texas Station, Fiesta Rancho, Fiesta Henderson, now officially gone for good, the land up for sale, that money to be used for other things. All the history, first cashless gaming, first all digital movie theater, all that cool history, now gone for good. Just another victim of the pandemic. Do you think that these would have closed anyway? Did the pandemic just sort of speed up the timeline? Do you have any good memories of the Fiestas or Texas Station? Make sure to hit me up in the comments, smash the thumbs Thumbs up subscribe to the channel we'll be back with a regular show in just a couple days thanks so much for watching talk to you next time